Examine the whole foot. Look at the plantar and dorsal surface, medial and lateral aspect. Heel. Examine tips and between toes. Detection of neuropathy. Diagnosis of neuropathy start with careful inspection and palpation. Neuropathic feet are warm with bounding balls. Prominent veins. Dry skin and fissures caused by decreased sweating. Wasting of the small muscles resulting in Claw toes High arch Test for sensation of the feet Touch Pain Temperature Ankle reflex Using 10 gram monofilament Diagnose loss of protective sensation if the patient cannot feel the monofilament Apply tuning fork 128 over bony prominence Quantitative assessment of vibration sense could be done by neurosociometer if available Loss of sensation to a 10 gram monofilament or loss of vibration perception are helpful in determining the future risk of the foot ulceration. Detection of peripheral arterial disease. Inspect the foot for color changes. Feel the foot for temperature difference. Palpate the dorsalis bides artery, just lateral to the tendon of flexor hallucis longus, and palpate the posterior tibial artery midway between medial malleolus and the Achilles tendon with foot passively dorsiflexed. The absence of both pedal pulses strongly suggests the presence of vascular disease. Systolic ankle pressure can be measured easily using a sphygmomanometer and handheld Doppler device. The sphygmomanometer cuff is wrapped over the lower part of the leg, just above the malleolus. Use the Doppler probe to identify the Doppler arterial signal. Inflate the cuff until the Doppler arterial signal becomes no longer heard. Slowly deflate the cuff and note the pressure reading when the Doppler signal returns. Ankle brachial index equal the highest pressure at the ankle divided by the higher systolic pressure of brachial artery. Defective feet perfusion diagnosed if the ankle brachial index less than 0.9. Deformity. Foot deformity cause an increase in foot pressure. Inspect the feet for high arch foot, prominent metatarsal head, clawing of the toes, hallux valgus, hallux rigidus. Hallux rigidus is decreased range of motion with loss of dorsiflexion of big toe. Neuroosteoarthropathy, known as charcoal foot. It is a distraction of bones and joints associated with the neuropathy. It may lead to collapse of the medial longitudinal arch of the foot, resulting in rocker bottom deformity, under which ulcer is formed. This could be avoided by early diagnosis and proper management of acute stage. Acute charcoal should be suspected in any patient with neuropathy if they present with a hot, red, swollen, and sometimes painful foot. Non-ulcerative pathology. There is no trivial lesion of diabetic foot as minor lesion can lead to ulcer. 
bully maceration nail abnormalities deformed nail ingrown nail thick nail callus callus is a warning that dangerously high mechanical forces are acting on the foot it occurs on sites of high pressure hemorrhage within callus is an important precursor of ulceration ulcers ulcers on the plantar surface are usually neuropathic and ulcers on the margins of the foot are usually neuroschemic. However, ulcers can appear on other sites. Interdigital and dorsal ulcers can be caused by tight, ill-fitting shoes in both neuropathic and neuroschemic feet. Detection of infection. Infection in a diabetic foot is potentially limb-threatening and requires urgent diagnostic and therapeutic attentions. The regular signs of infection could be lacking in people with diabetes. Inspect and feel the skin for color changes, warms, swelling, discharge, bad smell and pain. Look for maceration due to fungal infection. Footwear. Foot examination is never completed without an inspection of the patient footwear. Proper footwear should be properly fitted. Wide toe box. Rocker rigid outsole. Soft insole. Seamless construction. Extra depth to accommodate custom-made in Seoul. Before the patient leaves the clinic, he should be instructed about food care. At the end of examination, the frequency of the follow-up visit depends upon risk categorization. No sensory neuropathy once a year. Sensory neuropathy every six months Sensory neuropathy with signs of peripheral vascular disease and or food deformity every three months. Previous ulcer and or amputation every month. 